that's it. I'm boycotting Hollywood. And I don't mean the sign on the hill or the city in Southern California. No, I mean the elite movie industry, the establishment media of Hollywood. That's right. They are just farther from reality now than Charles Manson. It's fucking disgusting. And I've never been a big fan of going to the movies anyways, of going to the theater for the theatrical experience. It just never seemed to make sense to me when you could stay home and, you know, download a movie for free or rent one and watch it at home with the comfort of your living room and cheaper snacks and not having to be around a bunch of strangers. Maybe it's just because I'm a homebody, but I never really got the appeal of going to the theaters, but that's not enough as far as boycotting Hollywood goes. Because they take the movie money that we give them when we go to the theaters, when we rent movies, when, I don't know, when we buy merchandise, license from movie themes. I mean, it's just, they take that money and they directly use it to restrict your liberty. Now, we have to understand, how did we get to this point in the first place where the particular people that make up this group of Hollywood elite that I'm referring to had a monopoly on storytelling? I mean, really, movies, the feature-length video presentation is the height of the art form of storytelling with modern technology. It is. And... You can dispute that based on your own personal taste or what have you, but in the past, they were able to establish their monopoly because of technological superiority, right? There was no other distribution mechanism than having movies shown in theaters. And so we got the great American tradition of going to the movies. And that provided a certain monopoly on distribution. And you can say, yes, there was competition in that, sure, but the result was obviously that those who could tap into the network of theaters, those who were the masters of distribution, and that's really what controls the flow of money in Hollywood, the distribution of movies, then you could have a, a, a quasi-monopoly on the entertainment industry. Then came television. And the movie industry was, oh, well, you know what, that, that's a threat to the monopoly. But it was soon clear that they were going for a different format. And yes, you have movies on television. And while television has car car carved out a place for itself in the entertainment industry as a whole, and some would say taken a huge chunk out of the hide of the movie industry over the decades, clearly m movies still have their place. They still have their niche, and the theaters still have their function. And there are still people that have to go see it right away, got to go see it as soon as it's out, got to get that theater experience, got to pay $10 for a handful of popcorn and a soda that's going to kill you with all the poisonous chemicals in it anyways. And then came the Internet. And now... Whereas in the past with television, you could really control the distribution. When you had television, you still had that technological-based monopoly on the distribution. And you could therefore enforce intellectual property laws very easily. Now, we know intellectual property is a scam. The internet is killing the scam that is intellectual property, and we see now that the real threat to the movie industry, although not enough of a threat, is downloading movies on the internet. But even that's just scratching the surface of the threat that the internet represents for movies and for Hollywood. But let's step back for a second. If I'm gonna make the assertion that Hollywood is a direct threat to your liberty, let's get into some of the specifics of that because there's a deal with the Pentagon. And you might think, well, of course there's a deal with the Pentagon. They have deal, no. The impacts of this are quite significant because the Pentagon has a deal with movie makers. It says, if you would like to consult with us, you're welcome to ask for tips on realism, historical accuracy, as if the government knows anything about that. And you can actually get our help making movies. Yeah, that's right. The Pentagon has this whole program, the whole office set up just to help 
make movies and to make them more realistic or unrealistic or dystopic, but they have an office at the Pentagon set up to do nothing but liaise with Hollywood. And the purpose is to control the message and further the government propaganda. And here's how it works. If you have a script that falls in line with the Pentagon's narrative of the American military is the most awesomest force for good in the entire world and we never hurt anybody except for the bad guys that deserve it and everybody who joins the military is a hero, well, they'll help you out. I mean, like, they'll go out of their way. I mean, millions and millions of dollars have been spent by the Pentagon helping Hollywood and giving them helicopters and tanks and personnel and, and, and consulting, all the stuff that they'd otherwise have to pay for on their own. And now, Full Metal Jacket, by contrast, as an anti-war film, at least allegedly, although I still think it glorifies war and was the primary reason that I ended up enlisting in the Marines, wasn't pro-war enough for the Pentagon, and Stanley Kubrick had to do that one completely independently. But it makes sense that Hollywood would then support Obama, right? I mean, as much of a warmonger as he is, they, I mean, they love this. Because if you if you have a monopoly on storytelling and you want to be able to tell dramatic stories that get everybody into the theater and get everybody pumped up and and don't discount the source of revenue of playing National Guard ads and ads for the Marines, you know, slaying the lava monster in theaters before the movie starts. By the way, I can tell you, you know, I, I went to boot camp, I went to Marine combat training, I went to field artillery school, I was in Fallujah. And at no point did I get to slay a lava monster. I mean, it's just, they are, yeah. Anyways, they, it is a total warping of the perception of reality when you see the influence of the government on Hollywood. But it goes both ways. And Hollywood wouldn't do anything to challenge the enforcers of their intellectual property monopolies over their movies, where it's illegal to make a copy, even if it's within your rights, even if it's, you know, hypothetically legal sharing. No, because they know that that's a threat to their income. And so they have built in to this establishment that has evolved over the decades a, a culture of worshiping government. And if you really were to go back and look at look at and analyze the plots of movies that, that involve political, even non-political movies, there's the, the, the relationship to authority that is so pervasive that it, that is now a, a part of American mythology, thanks to Hollywood, says that you know government is a force of good in the world and the authorities are there to protect you. I mean, it's. It, it, it makes perfect sense, but it, it goes the other way, too. And now they've hired Senator Dodd, former Senator Dodd, who did so much good work as a U.S. senator to serve his sponsors in the banking industry and on Wall Street. He is now the chief lobbyist for Hollywood in Washington. And, I mean, if Scientology wasn't enough of a sign to show you that these people are deranged, just look at what they're advocating when it comes to challenging the internet, because that's what this is really about. They're challenging anything that's a threat to their monopoly. And the way they're doing it is with intellectual property. So then we get, we get all of these bullshit bills, right? All of these attempts to censor the internet, to put a kill switch on it, to restrict the free flow of information, and, and any, any use of force, which is all that government really has to enforce its laws and regulations force. You don't do what they like, men with guns come and put you in cages. It is always morally wrong to use force to stop or impede in any way the free flow of ideas. So from this, we get the top five reasons why you should join me in boycotting Hollywood. One, SOPA. Two, ACTA. Three, PIPA. Four, CISPA. And five, Mel Gibson. So for all of those reasons, I mean, just now, I, I have to say, it, it wasn't the Twilight trilogy that pushed me over the top. I didn't go see it anyways. But just poking around the internet, even looking for news, you can't avoid this crap. It's fucking everywhere. And I mean, now, what, what was it? Somebody broke up with somebody and somebody cheated on somebody. And next thing you know, everybody's in fucking tears about it. How pathetic is this shit? But what's worse now, the dark night rises. Yeah, the shooting in Colorado. We had to hear from these preachy motherfuckers. We are so sorry that this place of innocence and hope and dreams and movie magic was interrupted by this scene of carnage. 
Really? Are you fucking kidding me? You... Really? Do you know how warped the priorities are here? If you have a movie that's got murderous rampages, killing, slaughtering, eating brains, people getting shot, slaughtered, I mean, use your imagination. Hollywood certainly does use it to inspire the worst gore that we experience in real life. You don't think the guys in, in Iraq who tortured civilians, myself included, you don't think the prison guards at Abu Ghraib, you don't think the people in Afghanistan of the murder team, the kill teams, the killing for fun, collecting human trophies, you think they didn't think that because of movies perhaps, because of the mythology that they contribute to, they were all just gonna be heroes? And the Joker himself, yeah, James Holmes. Yeah, you, do, do you really want to get preachy about us? Not being a, a, a moral, upright enough society when Hollywood, you're the ones coming up with all of this shit? I mean, you couldn't paint a better world for us on the screen? No, it's always some sick, twisted appeal to humans' worst, basest desires to see sensationalist violence, and yet... If there's a boob on the screen, got to have it rated R. Can't let the kids see that. Can't let them see. I don't want to even say where they came from because that would be sex, right? No. It's, oh, well, we can't show fucking. No, 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 no. No fucking. No, that would be. Whew, you're going to warp some poor little minds. But a boob, you know, I, I, the thing that nourishes. Yeah. Rated R. Keep it away from the kids. Christopher Nolan, director. The Dark Knight for Warner Brothers. Had to come out and say, oh, out of respect and sensitivity for the victims of the Colorado shooting, we are, we're not going to announce box office totals for the opening weekend of The Dark Knight. No, instead, we're, we're, we're going to count our, our blood money in private, yeah. So, you know, you go to the movies, you're, you're contributing to this, all, all of it. You're, you're contributing to this. The bullshit hero worship, the rehash plots, the cliche characters, the, the preaching from action stars who are anti-gun, who we treat like fucking royalty and then expect to, to tell us how to live our lives. You're contributing to this. And you know, I'm, I'm not much of a moviegoer. I mean, really, I, 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 I don't buy into the bullshit. I'm not the kind of guy as your typical American who's gonna go see the latest action flick because everybody's seen it and you got it. You know, I, I almost saw The Avengers. I haven't seen The Avengers yet. I almost did. I almost went and saw The Avengers because it was, everybody's, you gotta go, oh, you, know, you haven't seen The Avengers. I mean, <laughs> and then I, I just, I didn't go. And uh, surprise, surprise, my life was not an empty shell from thenceforth. No, nope. I've been doing just fine. But you know what, occasionally, occasionally, I gotta admit, I'll go to the theaters. I'll get sucked in. I'll want to take a date or something, or I'll meet a girl that just got to see the latest flick. And, you know, I was actually suckered into seeing In Time, the, the Justin Timberlake movie, thinking, oh, well, this is going to be interesting. This is going to be a great philosophical examination of important issues. It's going to be a, a great stimulating plot. It's going to look at the concept of time as money. Oh, my God. And then... I was just disappointed to find out it was absolute, total, liberal, statist drivel designed to make us feel like we need government to fight inequality. I mean, how, how many times have you done that? Have you gone, you gone to a movie and been like, oh, this would be fun, yeah. And you come up going, wait, 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 wait a second, did I just get brainwashed? Did I do, did, did more Hollywood propaganda, I, I guess. And, and you might say, but Adam, but Adam, you're gonna miss all the good movies. I mean, Atlas Shrugged Part Two is coming out. You know what? You know what? Great. I'll wait till I can rip it for free. Yeah. Even though I support it being made, I support the message. I can't support the industry. I can't support the network. I can't support this concept that going to a theater in this age of technology even is something that it, it, humans shouldn't get over. Aside from the fact that if you stay home, you're much less likely to get shot. What you can do 
with technology today should have rendered Hollywood obsolete a long time ago, but no, thanks to the continued hero worship of bullshit celebrity crap, thanks to this monopoly with intellectual property enforced by government, we see the effect of the concentration of so many entertainment resources around this movie model. And yeah, some great movies will be made that way, sure. But I, you know what, I, I would rather miss the Atlas Rug Part 2. Yeah, I read the book anyways. I mean, come on. The book's always better. Yeah, you know that. You know that's true, right? I mean, there's not... Uh, the book's always better. It's, it's, it's like a law of nature, okay? The book's always better. Um, that's not true. But when you could go to the theaters to see that one good movie, wouldn't you rather maybe stay home and watch a documentary with loved ones where you can take it in and support an independent media creator and be entertained by something that is also putting information in your head? I mean, that's at least what I'm going to be doing. And, and I've decided that this is going to be, at least for my part, a deliberate boycott of Hollywood. I'm not going to go to a theater to see a Hollywood movie ever again. I'm not going to rent a movie. I'm not going to pay for a service that gives money to any of the producers of Hollywood movies. There are so much, there, there is so much better content online. And there are so many people deserving of your support, financially and otherwise, who would benefit from this. I mean, imagine if you simply wanted your resources to go to better content creation. Do you really think going to a theater and sending your money through that ringer is going to result in anything other than another movie that you've seen already just with better graphics and different actors. I mean, come on, we can, we can do better than this. So I'm not saying don't watch movies. You know, there are a lot of great ones out there. Sure. If you've got movies at home already on DVD or I don't know, is anybody still using VHS? Watch them, enjoy them. Sure. But please, please, please don't give any more money to these douchebags in Hollywood.